Hello, welcome to this two-part tutorial on how to render using ZBrush and then compositing in Photoshop. This video will be split up into two parts. In part one, we will look at the basic light setup and render settings I use for the main composition of my final sculpt. And in part two, I will show the different matcap materials that I use to take the final composition further in Photoshop. So without further ado, let's get into ZBrush part one, basic light setup. Um, so what I normally do is I usually have uh, color on my model and I'm not going to go through how I colored my model I'm just going to show you the end result um, hopefully in future videos I will have more detailed description and presentation of how I create the colors for my model but for this very short tutorial I'm going to show you how I use how I go from this to a final render in Photoshop so first things first we want to grab our light and I've just put my light into the sidebar here and we want to position the character which I've already saved a pose in in documents in cluster one but you can set yours up wherever however you like and then we go over to lights and we position our key light. This will be the key light that will sh that will hold all the shadow information as well. So you want to play around, and this could take a little time to play around with until you get it right, until you get the way the shadow is right on the model. Uh, you want to maybe take the distance down on this light. Try again. That's better. So when you're happy with your key light, as I am with this one, you want to go over to your render tab and dock that on the left. Go into the shadows and bump the shadow angle up to around 30. This is just going to give the shadows a bit of a sh uh, softer read on, on your um, model, so it's not going to be too harsh. It's going to have a blurred effect around it. See, there's a bit of blurriness going on in these areas where the, sh the shadow was. And you can play around with all these settings if you like, but I will for this key for this try uh, for this tutorial. Sorry, uh, it's just going to be we're just going to use the angle, ray, resolution, and blur. Uh, to speed up the process, we tend I tend to keep it like the factory settings, but with the angle turned up until I'm happy with every, everything and then I will, uh, when it comes to final render, put the rays up to about 400 and then just let that render and um, and that will give me more resolution uh, later on. So for now, these are the settings that I have for my shadow. And now I want to add a new light and this light will be the rim or secondary light for my model. I'll take the ambient down, turn the intensity up, and when I press render, it should come out like that. And you want to play around with this light quite a bit. The further, if you tap on the on the sphere in the light tab it'll push the light either from the front or to the back so this is at the front this is at the back and I'm just gonna position this light so that it comes around the edges of the model in the back or lights the edges around the model at the back just move that light up a bit more maybe intense put the intensity up a bit more too much intensity now maybe go back down it's all very much uh, you know um, 
playing around with the lights and getting to a point where you feel it looks good. Um, so we just put the distance down a bit. There we go. So that is the first pass that I do. And then when I'm happy with that, I will always, I will usually go up to the shadow and bump those rays up to around 400. Come bring, push down the the render properties and bump the details up to four. Plug in the occlusion. Come down to the occlusion. Set the blur to zero, uh, to one. Sorry, the rays up to 400. Resolution to about 400. And the Z depth to minus uh, to plus one, and this will give us a bit more of a crisper ambient occlusion. And just press uh, BBR render and just wait for it to finish rendering. And once you have finished rendering or ZBrush has finished rendering, you should have something that looks like this on your screen. And if you come over to the BBR render passes, you should have shadow, depth, shaded, masked, and an ambient occlusion. Um, you, what not, what's the, the next step you want to do is uh, export each individual one of these images out um, as a PSD file and then uh, we will return after I've done that and we'll look at how we can create more renders to help the final image pop a bit more with within Photoshop later on and to help uh, create more in uh, more depth to our model once you are happy and you have your exported renders from the first pass then what I tend to do is start rendering out extra maps or extra images to help with the um, compositing stages in, in Photoshop. So these, these, these maps are going to help with uh, skin tone, it's going to help with details um, and lighting, uh, specular highlights and stuff like that. So uh, the, these next stages are the key to compositing in my style in, in Photoshop. So let's get started. Um, well, the first thing I always render out straight after the initial passes is a flat color pass. And a flat color pass. Pause that for a minute. We want to turn off the ambient occlusion and the shadows because we no longer need those for these renders. So and it's just going to slow us down as well when it comes to rendering. So I will always render out a flat color pass. So you want to export this only this map from now on. Uh, we have all the other maps anyway. So just export this map as an as a PSD, uh, a flat PSD color and. Um, I'll do that now so I can show you how I do it. So these are the ones I rendered out previously, uh, the amber occlusion, the depth, the mask, the render, the, the main render, sorry, and the shadow. So I want to call this one flat. Now once you have your flat mask then or your flat uh, image then you can go ahead and turn off the colors on the side here, so we no longer need the colors on the side for your character. And we want to go over here, and all of these mo uh, materials uh, are, you can find on ZBrush Central. Uh, so I've just downloaded all of these materials from ZBrush Central, they're all free. And um, these are the ones we're going to use, well, not all of them, but we will use some of these to help with the post, uh, Photoshop. Uh, com Composition, composition later on. So, what I tend to, tend to use when it comes to organic creatures uh, is um, the smoke cap here, uh, matte cap skin 04, and press the render, and it gives you this outcome. And you just want to render, uh, 
export that out, put it into a new folder, um, materials. Now I don't tend to no, uh, name these, I just tend to number them, but that's because I've been using, doing this for quite a while now, but if you want to uh, name them then go ahead, but it do, really doesn't matter later on in Photoshop because we'll just be moving them around um, everywhere in Photoshop, so um, yeah, numbering system works fine for that. And then the next one I usually do is this one, just export that one and then frame 01 which will give us some crevice details or cavity details which we can use in Photoshop and then going along to any of these other ones so I tend to take the soft solar this will help with subsurface scattering faking subsurface scattering in Photoshop later um, the reflected map, which will help with reflections and giving a fake reflection. You can even do the reflective map number two as well. And then there's a lot of other ones here. If you have a little bit of metal, like rusted metal, like I have here on his collar, then I would tend to go for a metal texture or a rusted metal texture. Just trying to find it. Mm, that will do. We just render that one out. And GK bubblegum. SL skin mat two. So when you're happy with all the different matte materials that you've uh, you've you've got. Uh, rendered out. You can as, use as many as you like or as few as you like. I just tend to go for roughly 10. Um, I always also also, um, also export a normal map render and this will help with lighting later on as well. Um, you'll see in, in Photoshop later. So once we have all the materials exported then we have to export some reflective uh, reflective lights. So what I tend to do is go to a blend material, turn it the material to black, come down to the light source, turn off the secondary light, and just use the main light to create some specular highlights. So you want a distance up to 100, uh, the ambient occlusion to 3, and then the intensity can go really high up because you really want those blown out whites because you're going to be using it for reflective or, or rim light uh, extra rim lighting so in this case rim lighting we just turn the we just click on it to uh, click on the sphere sphere sorry to put it into the back and then we press the bpr render and it will give us this white light around the edges and we're going to composite this later in photoshop so don't worry about it looking weird when you see it here it's, it's all going to be changed later on. So um, I'm going to put this as lights. O1. And now we have the rim lights so let's put some s extra lights in the front. You can even turn the distance down if you like. If you think it's too much light coming through. Um, what's a good one to do is push it to the back and then bring it close to the edge and then you'll get this nice forward off on the side or on from the top or from the side here um, it just catches the light or fake catches the light at different angles which is good so this again you want to be just playing around with the light and position it in a way that you really like uh, where it's coming from so we'll, we'll export this one now we won't use every single light, but it's good to have a variety of 
specular highlights um, so that you can play with it later on in Photoshop. So just grab that one. You can even have one from the very bottom if you wanted. If you want to light the speculars from the bottom. And once I'm happy with all the blend ones, then I can come over to the material tab, go to jelly bean material, and play around with that lighting. Now this one's a little different from blend. It has a, a secondary grey hue in it rather than the blend which is just the black and the white so this one will, will have a, a secondary grey between the black and white specular um, which helps define shapes a bit more I find uh, so if you click on that you can see it comes out differently you can even bring the distance down a bit more and play with the light a bit more There we go. So let's say this one is the one we want. And that's that's it. That's the the rendering in ZBrush. If you wanted you can go further and add a ID map so you can mask off areas in in Photoshop and then just work on those areas in Photoshop. So I'll just do that now quickly. Um so I have my character no colors on it, it's a flat color, so bring it up to the white and we're just going to add some flat colors to the model so that we can uh, mask off those areas in Photoshop later. So we'll add the red for the main model, for the eyes, just add a green, for the metal we'll add a blue Come to the chain down here as well, add the same. And that ring there. The tongue can be the same as the skin. The gums can be the same as the skin. And the teeth. We'll change the teeth to a purple or or a lighter blue. And then what we'll do is we'll just render out a quick ID map for this one. So we'll come back to the main area and just type in ID for the ID mask. And that's it. So I hope this has helped um, with the rendering stage in ZBrush for you guys. Um, if if you have any other questions, please uh, put them in the comment section below and we will look in, be going into Photoshop next to see how we can composite all the images we just created to come out with a, a cool design on the other side. So stay tuned for the next episode.